Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we are going to discuss about the ocean flow structure. Now in this video, we will learn about continental shelf, continental slope, submarine canyon, continental rise, abyssal plains, sea mount, mid oceanic ridges, ocean trenches and hydrothermal vents. Here we can see the diamond diagrammatic representation of the ocean flow. It starts with continental shelf over here, which is a part of continental crust. Then we see continental slope and then we see continental rise. All these three structures are part of continental crust. Then we see abyssal plains, mid oceanic ridges, sea mount, highlands and trench over here. And all these are part of the oceanic crust. Now let's first see continental shelf. Continental shelf is the submerged part of continental crust where the depth of ocean does not increase from 200 to 300 meters. The slope of the land is also very less. In fact, if we see here, it appears as a flat region to us. Because of less thickness, sunlight can easily illuminate this region and that is why we find large number of organisms living in here. In fact, all the marine plants live in continental self zone. Even the coral reefs are found in continental self. Here, the nutrients are supplied by the ocean currents as well as the rivers by the erosion. They bring a lot of sediments here, which is a source of nutrients in this region. The thickness of the continental shelf varies across the world. Here is the map of the world and this color, this blue color, indicates the continental shelf. We can see that the continental shelf is very thick in the Siberian region. This is the thickest zone of continental shelf. And if you see this South American western margin, we can see that the continent itself is almost non-existent because here there is a subduction zone. This plate is actually subducting under the South American plate. This is the map of Indian subcontinent and we can clearly see here that the continental shelf on western boundary is more thick compared to the continental shelf on the eastern side of our Indian subcontinent. Here in this figure, we can see that this zone, which is highlighted by violet color, is the continental shelf. So here is the summary of what all we discussed: that the continental shelves are submerged part of continental crust, which lies below ocean water. The depth of oceans above continental shelves is around six to two hundred meters. In some regions, it could be around three hundred meters as well. The continental shelves have very low slope and are virtually plain regions. The average width of continental shelves is 80 to 90 km. The highest thickness is found at the Siberian shelf, which is the largest continental shelf, and the shelf can be very thin on convergent boundaries, like our western margin of North and South American plates. The continental shelf has a thick deposition of sediments which are brought by rivers and waves eroding the rocks. Now, how was this continental shelf formed? It is believed that during the Ice Age, all these continental shelves were not submerged under water, but they were outside of water. These regions were eroded by the factors of erosion, and they were flattened. In fact, fissures were formed by glacier erosion. Slowly, the ice melted after the Ice Age, and the sea level rose, and these all continental shelves were drowned. The water currents kept eroding the relief on these continental shelves and thus making it more flat. Sediments from wave erosion as well as from river erosion are deposited here. So even after this were submerged, the sediments which were brought by the rivers as well as the sediment created by wave erosion of the coastal line kept on depositing on this continental shelf and therefore it created a layer of sediments on the continental shelf. So what is the importance of continental shelf? Continental itself is actually the most useful part of all the oceanic structure. First of all, it supports large number of marine organisms. So we have seen that because the thickness of continental crust is very low, sunlight can easily penetrate those regions. And therefore, we see a lot of coral reefs, a lot of plants and a lot of marine organisms living in this region. All the ocean plants and many variety of algae live in the continental cells. Ocean currents and rivers bring nutrients. So basically the nutrients are brought by the ocean currents and the rivers which erode the landforms. 
because of these nutrients, the continental shelf has a lot of nutrients which uh, promote the growth of phytoplanktons. And hence, there is abundant feeding grounds for zooplankton as well as larger animals. Coral reefs are also found on continental shelves. And we can find microscopic shrimps to large fishes in this region. So basically, the continental shelf supports a large variety of animals. And therefore, it promotes fishery. Further, rich minerals and crude oil as well as gas can be found in those continental shelves. We can see that Bombay High as well as this Krishna Godavari Basin is part of continental shelf. The reason why we get so much amount of crude oil and gas over here because the organisms which live in these uh, continental cells truly they die and they get buried. Layer upon layer is formed and in million years they get converted to this crude oil and gas. And since the number of organisms living in the continental self is higher than the organisms living in any other part of the ocean. Therefore, the chances of finding crude oil and gas is more in the continental self. Here we see that rich source of minerals and crude oils are formed in the continental self. It supports many types of living organisms which die and get buried on the ocean floor. In millions of years, it gets converted into coal, oil or gas. Erosion of rivers as well as waves, they kept depositing mineral on the shelves. So this river erosion which goes on for millions of years also deposits large number of minerals on the continental shelf. Now let's see the second thing that is the continental slope. So just after the continental shelf ends, this is called self break region, this point. So after that, the continental crust starts to dip with a very high slope. And this slope is called continental slope. Basically, this it connects the continental shelf with the abyssal plains, which we found on the ocean floor. Here in this figure, we can see that the area marked by this green region is our continental slope. So basically, we can see that there is a steep slope over here. Now, the continental slope can be very steep in the regions of subduction. Here, we know that the Indian plate is subducting under the Eurasian plate. So there is a subduction zone. So in this region, the continental slope will have a very steep slope while in the regions where there is stable coastline, the slope will be less steeper. Here again on the western margin of South American plate, we have a subduction zone and therefore the coastal slope is very steep in this region. So this is the summary of continental slope that we discussed. The continental slope is the oceanward part of continental crust which has steep slope. The continental slope starts from self break and extends till the oceanic basin. So we have seen that it starts where the continental shelf ends and it goes till the abyssal plain. Its depth could be from 300 to 3000 meters. Slope is high at convergent continent ocean boundaries with trenches and young fold mountains. So we have seen the examples of the South American continent where the western margin we had a trench and Andes mountains on one side. The slope is low for stable coasts, mainly without major rivers. So if there is no river and the coast is stable, then there will be low slope. The reason is that if there is a river present, it will keep on depositing sediments, which will create a steeper slope. The continental slope forms boundary of continental crust. And predominant sediments of continental slopes are mud. So if we see what kind of sediments are deposited on this continental slope, then predominantly those are mud. Now the next structure we want to discuss is continental rise. The point where the continental slope ends, if we move any further, there is a sudden rise. And then we see that there is a gentle slope which merges with the abyssal plain. So this region where there is a sudden increase in the height and then there is a very smooth sloping part is called continental rise. This continental rise is created by the sediments which are deposited on the continental slope. Because of very steep slope over here, the sediments which are deposited, they roll down and they get accumulated over here. So the continental rise is a raised region as we have seen that it is a raised region because of the sediments which are deposited at the foot of continental slope. It forms 
margin of the continental slope and slowly merges with the abyssal plain and they have gentle slope on the abyssal plain side. It is formed by the sediments which are deposited on the continental shelves and they flow down the slope due to landslide currents or earthquakes and these sediments then deposit at the feet of continental slope. So this is how when the amount of sediments on the continental slope increases, a ocean current or landslide or earthquake will trigger that sediment to move downwards and it will collect at the feet of this continental slope and that is what we call as continental rise. The next thing that we will discuss is a submarine canyon. Submarine canyons are generally formed on the continental slope and they may extend to the continental shelf on the backward side. So this kind of structure, there is a canyon which is formed on the continental shelf is called submarine canyon. They are submerged underwater and they can extend from the continental shelf till the abyssal plain. There can be several branches of this uh, submarine canyon. Now an example of submarine canyon can be found in our Bay of Bengal. Here we can see that this is the delta region of Ganga, Brahmaputra and Meghna river where they bring a lot of silt. Now this silt when it is deposited over here it increases the weight. And under this weight there could be a landslide or the water which is having those sediments they will start to flow downwards with a very high velocity. This is called turbidity flow. So any one of these two can cause this kind of structure. So this is a submarine canyon in our Bay of Bengal. This is how a submarine canyon is formed. Here we see that on the continental shelf we have large amount of sediments deposited. And if the water which is flowing has large number of sediments and it starts a turbidity current, then the slope will fall and the sediments will flow down creating a canyon-like structure. So this is the summary of submarine canyon where we see that there is a steep-sided valley cut into the seabed of the continental slope. And sometimes it extends till the continental shelf. And this can be formed by two mechanisms. The first is erosion by turbidity current. And second is slumping and mass wasting. Or you can consider it as landslide. So turbidity current is basically a rapid downhill flow of water caused by increased density due to high amounts of sediments. So if, the, if in the water there are large amount of sediments, the weight of that water will increase. And if it flows down in the continental slope, it will create a submarine canyon. Similarly, a landslide can also create a submarine canyon. The next structure is sea mounds. The sea mounds we can see over here. So sea mounds are structure which rise from the oceanic floor and they are not able to reach the surface of the water. If they reach the surface of the water, then they form islands. But here we can see that this uh, mountain-like structure is not able to reach the sea surface and therefore we call it as sea mounds. Now these sea mounds are generally volcanic in origin where the volcanic mountains get eroded and go below the surface of the water and then we call them as sea mounds. The next structure is abyssal plain. So we can see that the continental rise is followed by abyssal plain. And remember, abyssal plain is generally found on the margins of the ocean floor. So here you can see that we have abyssal plain over here and we also have a abyssal plain on this side because in the middle we have mid oceanic ridges. So abyssal plain are generally found on the margins of the ocean floor. And these regions are the regions where there is no slope. They are completely flat. These regions are formed by eroding the reliefs on the oceanic floor. Here in this map we can see that here there is a abyssal plain on that side in Arabian Sea we can see that there, there is a abyssal plain. Again here we can see that there is a abyssal plain. This is the Atlantic Oceanic Floor and we can see a abyssal plain on this side as well as on this side. In the middle we have mid oceanic regions. Again here we can see abyssal plains over here. So you can see that abyssal plains are not found everywhere in the ocean floor but it is found on the margins of the oceanic floor. The depth of the abyssal plains can be from 3000 to 6000 meters, that is around 3 to 6 kilometers, and they cover around 50% of our Earth's surface. Abyssal plains are formed by erosion of the reliefs on the ocean floor. 
So basically, even if there are any undulations, if there are any mountains or any such structure on the floor, in million of years, these structures are eroded by the water to form a very flat structure, which is called abyssal plains. We can find pelagic sediments deposited on the abyssal plains. We will see this in another video in detail. Again, metallic nodules, which include magnesium, iron, nickel, cobalt, and other useful minerals, are also found in the abyssal plains. Next, we will discuss about the mid oceanic ridges. The mid oceanic ridges are generally found at a divergent boundaries, mainly at the ocean ocean divergent boundaries. Here, we can see the process of formation of mid oceanic ridges. It is the region where the magma from the ethnosphere reaches the oceanic flow, and we see mountains are formed on both sides of this uh, valley. So, these mountains are called mid oceanic ridges, and they are generally found in the center of the ocean floor. Here we have our Atlantic ocean floor and we can see this is the mid oceanic ridge. Next we will discuss about trenches. So trenches are formed when there is a convergent boundary. There is an ocean continent or ocean ocean convergent boundary. Then we can see that there is a trench formed. It occurs because the oceanic plate being heavier, it starts to subduct. And with subducts, we get a formation of trench like this. Trenches can be very deep. And the deepest trench in the world is the Challenger Deep Trench formed in the Philippine Sea. Next, we will discuss about hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents are fissures on the oceanic floor from which we see that heated water or other materials are discharged from the oceanic floor. And they are generally found in the volcanic region like the mid oceanic ridges or hotspots or subduction zones. And these regions are very biologically active. We see that there are microorganisms living around these hydrothermal vents. Photosynthesis does not occur in these regions and we see anaerobic respiration in these regions. This is a video from NASA of a hydrothermal vent. We can see that here that some material is coming from the oceanic flow. And this region is rich in biodiversity. We can see many organisms living in this region. Now we will discuss about banks. So banks are that part of seabed that is shallow compared to its surrounding area. So basically the depth of ocean in the bank is very low compared to the surrounding region and it is very flat like a plateau and have very smoother slope on the edges. These banks generally cause upwelling of the water and therefore it is a nutrient rich region and we find a lot of fishes in these regions. The Dodger Bank in North Sea and the Grand Bank in Newfoundland is an example of this. Here we can see the example of Newfoundland. So this is the region which is above the sea surface while these regions are below the sea surface and you can see that they are extended within the ocean and they are very flat and even the slopes are very smooth compared to a sea mount or a volcanic mountain. I hope you like this video and if you like this video then please Subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. If you have any doubt, then please ask us in the comments and we will try to solve it. If you like what we are doing and want to, want to contribute to our cause, then please use the QR code given over here. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video.